Welcome to NJ Cigar and Whiskey. And today we have a very special review of Green Spot. And as you saw, we're gonna be pairing it with the Alec Bradley Filthy Hooligan. So Green Spot is a single pot still Irish whiskey made by the Middleton Company. It's sort of the brother or stepbrother of Red Breast. Originally they were made by very different companies. This was made by John Mitchell and Sons um, back in the early 1900s. Um, in the late 1800s and his Irish whiskey started to consolidate back in the 70s and 80s it all came under the flag of Middleton um, so there are different whiskeys but somewhat related both single pot stills and we're gonna give this uh, a good sniff mm. on the nose you get a very citrusy honey lemon orange Slight sense of coconut. Uh, very pleasant on the nose. And on the taste, it's um, you really get that honey, that very coated honey. And then the citrus, the orange, uh, slight lemon. Um, the sweet lemon and then a slight hint of a pepper in the background um, very classic single pot still uh, green spot is a non-age statement Irish whiskey so but it is aged seven to ten years um, you know red breast 12 is an age statement whiskey it's aged at least 12 years green spot seven to ten in new bourbon used bourbon and sherry casks so um, I think that bourbon gives it that sort of honey vanilla kind of flavor that you, you get. And you can see the color, it's, it's sort of just a nice golden straw kind of color. One of our favorite single pot stills, I keep looking over here, Nikki's sitting just off camera. And if you ask her, she probably prefers Green Spot over Red Breast. And sometimes I do too, depends on the day. So we will now move on to a cut in the light of the Alec Bradley Filthy Hooligan. We'll come back and just- Okay, this is the Alec Bradley Filthy Hooligan. It's a special release Alec Bradley does for St. Patrick's Day. Um, the Filthy Hooligan, this is a Five and a half by 50 stick. Um, the binder is an Ecuador, uh, Ecuadorian Sumatra. The filler is all Nicaraguan. And the wrapper is a Nicaraguan Yalapa. That's the dark part right here, right? Combined with a Honduran Candela. Um, this should produce some really interesting flavors. I use my no name, the Jimmy B, uh, cutter. It's a uh, little chocolatey, but a little barnyardy on the smell. On the pre light draw, tastes somewhat mild. Strong tobacco. Nice smoke output on the light. got a strong tobacco core and very deep earth this is the first time in probably two years that I've had one of these they're difficult to get a hold of uh, and they're an offshoot of the um, 
black market. Yeah, like Bradley black market. So uh, we're going to get into this. We're going to get a sense of the flavors. I'm not getting a whole lot except for that deeper. And strong tobacco core. But let's give it a chance and let's give it a chance to get into some of that candela. We'll come back and we'll see how it interacts with the green spot. All right, we're good way in the th first third. You can see the ash is kind of flaky, and you can also see I can't figure out where the camera is. Um, it's flaky. It's holding on really by the skin of his teeth. It's probably time for me to dump it. And it just kind of came off in a pretty big chunk. Um, kind of expected from a barber pole. But the fact that it held on that, go that long kind of indicates some like good construction you know normally we talk about whether or not the seams are visible right when you're looking at a cigar but <laughs> yes those seams are visible <laughs> in a barber pole um the flavors got a bit i was underwhelmed at first when we when i first lit it um as a guy in the cigar you know that earth and that dark chocolate nick when she took a draw she really thought that dark chocolate kind of came through and as we got into the cigar i agree that dark chocolate really came through along with some hay and the really cool thing about this barber pole is it really does change depending on what kind of wrapper is burning more at the time that you pull that draw Right now, I'm burning on candela, and whether it's a psychological thing or not, I don't think it is. You really get more of that grassy, that hay, a slight vanilla, which is kind of weird. Vanilla on the retrohale, a slight white pepper. And then it'll go back a little bit darker, a little bit more chocolate, a little bit more earth, um, which makes this kind of fun. It's a fun smoke. Um, strength. I would say that the strength is mild to medium. It is not a heavy cigar. Um, the smoke output is great, but, you know, kind of along those lines, it's not an oily smoke. It's kind of an airy smoke. It, it's, it's very light. doesn't linger on your palate. And going back to flavors, there's not a lot of a, a, a finish to the cigar. The biggest finish is really maybe that earth, that tobacco core. Uh, construction for a barber pole, you can see the burn is a little bit off. I wouldn't call it razor sharp, but I, you know, there's not a real need to correct it. And it tends to get a little uneven on the transitions. The transitions, it evens itself out, and then it hits another transition. It starts to kind of burn a little sideways again. So that's where we're, we'll come back around the halfway point. And then as you pair it with the green spot, ooh, just got that green apple. When you pair it with the green spot, because in parts of the cigar, it's so dark, it amplifies how bright the green spot is. And... Um, like I said, just got that apple. You can see on the glass, it's a little bit dirty now, the viscosity of the green spot. It really does coat, and ironically, the whiskey has a longer finish than the cigar does. So the whiskey, part of the vanilla that I get on the retrohale from the um, Filthy Hooligan may be in part a finish from the green spot. Which is why I like to do these pairing videos. So that's all for now. We're going to go to about the halfway point where we will try and get to these interesting bands. Try and get that into focus there. You just got to love the way that band looks. And uh, I'll give you an update.
we reached about the halfway point and we're about 45 minutes in you can see how flaky again that ash is um, it was just holding on I was trying to keep it there until we got back the flavors haven't changed a whole lot in terms of what you, we experienced it's just um, they do that changing experience remains the same throughout the cigar you can see this first band does not come off easy finally got it um, you know the earth and dark chocolate is you know one sensation and then you start getting into the other wrapper and you get more of the sort of grassy grassy and hay um, still not too long on the finish a little more peppery on the retro hail but still that white pepper you don't feel that tingle that oh my god what did I just eat uh, kind of flavor the smoke and draw remain really good um, so not much to change there and that green spot just you, know, you get rid of that cigar it's maybe a little bit dry that green spot really kind of comes in and, and coats your palate emphasizes the sweet emphasizes that honey that honeysuckle that vanilla and every once in a while a little bit of banana so um those are the flavors that we're experiencing right now hope everybody's having a great saint patrick's day uh we've been looking forward to this <laughs> This is the first Wednesday we've had a whiskey in probably a month and a half. We usually only do it on the weekends. So, special day and special whiskey, special cigar. We'll get to the uh, last third and we'll let you know how it's going. We're getting into that last third of the filthy hooligan. It burns a little bit, a little bit crooked, but that's been throughout. nature of the barber pole smoke output it's 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 a smoke monster i mean it just pours smoke off the off the cherry and lots of smoke off the draw again light not not terribly oily doesn't really cling it's a little bit dry flavors have remained pretty consistent throughout um a little bit darker as we get toward the end a little less grass a little more of that dark chocolate and what happens is where the grass was it's more of like a deep tobacco core um, smoke time and considering the size of the cigar this is actually pretty good we're about an hour in so you'll probably get given this much left you'll probably get another 15 minutes so you're probably talking about an hour and 15 minutes smoke not bad price point was about 10 between 8 and 10 bucks at my local somewhat cigar somewhat wine shop didn't get this at lit didn't get this at churchill's and didn't get it through holtz actually couldn't find it at holtz um uh, it's hard to find this the original there's a second filthy hooligan which we'll be doing this weekend it's called the filthy hooligan shamrock um and it's actually a tripper triple barber pole it's um yalapa candela and then a connecticut so we'll see what the difference is between the two although we'll be doing a different whiskey probably kill Bagan single pot i'll let nick pick it um Just a great pairing with the green spot. I gotta be honest. The Yalapa, I wondered if it was gonna overpower the whiskey. But I think it takes a lot to overpower green spot. It's an understated and underrated whiskey, you know, in terms of people like, you know, if you like Highland Scotches, you'll really like the green spot. Um, 
if you're a bourbon person, I'm not so sure this will be in your wheelhouse. But for me, uh, you know, Irish whiskeys are completely in my wheelhouse and probably my favorite set of whiskeys, even though their flavor profiles are a little more limited than scotches. I like the idea that, you know, they're not necessarily peated except for Camara. Filthy Hooligan, if you can get your hands on one, I'd, I would recommend them. They're, they're a good smoke. And they just look cool. I mean, in all honesty, the flavors probably won't knock you over, but at the end of the day, they just look cool, and the transitions are actually really neat. So, we're really glad you could join us. And if you ever look on a map, and you see the County of Mayo. If you put into your Google machine, the Barony of Costello, you see where my people came from. So thanks for watching on our St. Patty's Day episode. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and to subscribe. Um, we want to get our viewership up, so maybe one day we can actually do a live episode. Have a great St. The rest of, well, I hope you had a great St. Patrick's Day. Hope you have a great rest of the week and we'll see you in the weekend.